Hey everybody, it's Creech Boo from Drop That Ink again, and um, you know, I've done a lot of videos, and usually when I'm messing around with my machines or whatever, I haven't been wearing gloves, because um, I'm not really working on anybody, so I figured I would kind of just go through this real quick, and it's just basically how, uh, you know, a uh, pretty good example of how you should pretty much set up your workstation um, for tattooing. <clears throat> so for one, I'm not baking anything here. Um... <laughs> But, uh, well, one thing I should go over with you, now I have this desk, it's a wooden desk, I've had it for a long time, there's a, one big thing about using wooden surfaces, um, it's extremely important to have some kind of a, um, easily washable covering over wood because if you were to say like get a little drip of ink or whatever especially like contaminated ink that has like blood or body fluid in it like if you were tattooing somebody and sometimes ink splatters a little bit you know um if you were to say like you know in the i'm usually really really careful as far as like when i get done with my liners or shaders to put them on some like a surface that's not gonna drip ink on anything like i'll put it up on my little tray here um but like say hypothetically speaking if you were to say to like switch between liners and shaders if you put your like liner down on a wooden surface if it were to get like a little bit of a you know, drip any ink, contaminated ink or whatever on that wooden surface. Things like hepatitis can live on wood for years and years and years. Um, actually, to the point when, if you were like to say brush up against somebody like um, like a thorn bush in the woods that had been like weathered through, you know, seasons, winter, spring, fall, um, whatever, um, summer. Um, you can still actually catch hepatitis from that thorn bush just by brushing up against it. So wood really, really holds in um, contaminated ink, contaminated blood. So you really want, if you are going to tattoo on any kind of a wooden surface, you would want some type of a covering over it. So I got this um, plastic stuff here. It's really like easily washable. And on top of that, I use a stainless steel tray. And I also put like usually aluminum foil as an insert on the inside of the tray because like I'll take my little rinse cups and I always have like a little square base for like my rinse cups just so they don't tip over very easy. Um, and then I'll take these little styrofoam trays and I'll take like a little, of course I have um, my tongue depressors so I'm not dipping my fingers right in Vaseline. And most artists tend to use Vaseline as far as um, during the tattoo process. Again, it's something you shouldn't use in the aftercare process at all. So I'll take a little goop of Vaseline and I'll use that actually to spread on the people's skin during the process. And I'll take my little ink cup and kind of give it a little dab of that Vaseline and I'll just kind of stick it on here. You know those um, like ink cup trays that are metal? They're kind of convenient I guess to the point like this does just as good of a job you know sticking your ink cup right to um, you know like a tray and basically the reason I use like aluminum foil or whatever is because you can't really stick that whole tray in an autoclave at least I certainly don't have one big enough to stick a whole tray in it. So I'll use a couple things, you know, to make sure that my stainless steel tray is protected. And then, too, if by chance I were to spill this water, it's just going to go inside this tray. It's not going to go all over my desk, certainly not, you know, dripping off my desk onto my uh, power supply. So, you know, a little goop of Vaseline will definitely stick your ink cups right on, you know, any kind of surface like that. <laughs> of course, you're going to want to use ink cups. Um, to pour your ink into um, and then whatever's left in that ink cup at the end of your tattoo you know all that stuff gets disposed don't ever pour any leftover ink back in your bottles you can see I have everything um, in airtight sealed jars even my gloves I never really understood why uh, you know tattoo artists doctors are horrible at it would use like a pair of they just keep an open box of gloves, which is the one thing that's actually going to be touching your client. So why would you keep an open box um, in a room that has bloodborne pathogens going through the air, people in and out of your studio, you know, coughing, whatever. And those gloves aren't protected at all. So the only thing they're actually protecting is the tattoo artist, not the client whatsoever. So I keep everything, you know, in airtight sealed jars. So I have my gloves, my ink cups, a small supply of like easily accessible needles and tubes, my tongue depressors, razors, 
I have this stuff, it's called Stencilin, um, but it's basically Surge Lube. It's just uh, like a medical grade um, a surgical, excuse me, surgical jelly. Um, so I'll use that for uh, stencil application because there's nothing nastier than spreading like a stick of deodorant on somebody, which is also very dangerous because if you were to nick somebody when you shave them, if you're gonna use deodorant to put a stencil on, like basically unless you were using a fresh stick every time, um, you know, that whole stick is basically contaminated. Um, I have some hand sanitizer right here and this stuff is awesome to take stencils off with like if you have to move the stencil a little squirt of hand sanitizer will take your stencil right off. Another thing I use besides uh, Surge Lube is Detol, one, uh, Detol number 16 which is a first aid antiseptic and this is a spray so um, this is awesome for stencil application. Um, so yeah, getting back to that, you know, and of course, like with your bottles of green soap, you would want some type of bag to cover that whole entire, particularly the trigger part, because if you're, you know, using this, if you have contaminated gloves on, you touch that trigger without like a protective bag over it, basically, you know, it's kind of hard to really sterilize a bottle, so you would want, you know, a disposable bag over it. So at the end of the tattoo, I take this bag off, you know, and put a new bag on for the next client. Um, so yeah, getting back to like the wood surfaces, you know, really, really dangerous and at least make sure you have some type of a, you know, a nice, easily cleanable, protective surface covering the wood part. Um, and, you know, like basically at the end of the tattoo, I'll make sure all this stuff is wiped down. Like certainly if I am uh, have to, you know, adjust the voltage on my machines or whatever, what I normally do is kind of gob up a big piece of paper towel if I have to do any minor adjustments. But, you know, I'll wipe all that stuff down at the end of the tattoo um, with Matticide, which is um, kind of like a... Uh, liquid sterilant to an extent, and um, when I talk about liquid sterilants, I don't mean things like bleach, rubbing alcohol, peroxide, which actually don't disinfect or sterilize anything, much less hepatitis, HIV, things like that. Another thing, you know, it's good if you're interested in getting tattoos, just make sure your artist, like, keeps his stuff, his or her stuff clean, you know, like, I wipe all my bottles down so they're not... They don't have ink gooping out all over them. Um, you know, keep your, your workstation clean. And also, uh, when I do, like I said, I keep a small supply of needles in an um, airtight sealed jar there, even though they're all, you know, prepackaged. But what I do with, um, you know, because I buy stuff in bulk, so I have like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of needles. And I'll keep those in a refrigerator because what happens if you keep them in a refrigerator, it'll um, prevent like microorganisms and germs from growing on the packaging. Um, granted, they are, you know, packaged, but then too granted, they are sharp needles. So in case you were to get like a pinhole or something, you know, if your needle were to by chance poke through any of that um, wrapper, um, if you keep them in a controlled uh, environment as far as like the temperature goes in a cool environment, um, you're not going to have to worry about like microorganisms and germs growing on the packaging. So yeah, everything I, you know, have is in airtight sealed jars. Um, and, you know, and this is a pretty easy thing basically at the end, you know, of course I'll put my needles, my used needles in a sharps container and I always make sure my clients can actually see me dispose of the needles afterwards. It's almost just as important as having people see me open them is to have, you know, make sure your client kind of hangs out for a minute so they can actually see you throw them away in a, you know, sharps container. And then all I basically have to do at the end is just kind of crumple up this paper, or this aluminum foil with all that stuff in it, you know, and that would go in a, a biohazard container, a biohazard bag. Um, so yeah, you know, even like stuff, you know, I have my paper towels down here. These are where I keep my, uh, it's just a biohazard bag, but I keep those little styrofoam trays, um, you know, everything covered basically like that um, stencil on stuff, that surge lube. Like I'll spread that on with Q-tips, so I have you know my Q-tips are all everything's like in airtight sealed jars. Even the paper towels, you know, I'll keep those covered with a bag. Everything stays bagged up. Um, obviously, no tattoo shops um, allow smoking in them. Smoking is 
you at wicked risk of infection if you're in an environment where there's people smoking. Um, so it's not like the old days, which is, um, as much as I like those stories of those old school tattooists, you know, <clears throat> as far as the uh, health and sanitary measures, they've we've definitely come a long way in the, the business, um, which is a good thing, you know. So, um, yeah, you know, just make sure. And even at the end, like, uh, obviously this is a no smoking uh, area, you know the studio itself and even at the end of the day like I'll cover this whole desk after everything gets wiped down in between tattoos I'll cover this whole thing this whole entire desk with a towel just to make sure nothing's getting on the desk in the intern um, so yeah you know I don't know I kind of just thought I would go over a little bit of that with you guys um, and again you know the gloves I certainly would kind of expect that you any artist would keep their gloves the one thing that's going to be touching the client certainly protected and germ free it doesn't make much sense having a box of open gloves and a you know sitting on a desk somewhere where you have bloodborne pathogens going through the air um, and of course like you know, tattoo machine like my clip cord or RCA cord, like I would put a bag over this to protect it, you know, um, if it's going to be touching, there's always a risk of the cords, you know, touching people's skin. So you'd want a disposable bag over your cords, over your machines, particularly pens, which I know a lot of people don't use. Um, they actually make bags specifically for pens because I mean, you're holding right onto that pen directly, um, so they're like terrible for cross contamination unless you actually put a bag over the entire pen. I'll get into another video about that at some point in time, but you know, so just kind of wanted to kind of go over that with you guys a little bit. Um, you know, I have a little first aid kit here, smelling salts. So fortunately, I only had to use them once in my entire 25 years. Um, but yeah, you know, so I do definitely keep a nice, you know, all the furniture gets wiped down at the end of the tattoos. Um, and again, like you can get stuff called maticide, which I'll show you here. Um, so this is like a germicidal solution and basically I'll use this to, um, you know, wipe everything down with. And it pretty much, you know, kills pretty much everything. Um, so again, things like rubbing alcohol, uh, bleach, all that stuff doesn't really do anything at all. Um, so yeah, just a couple of things to go over. You know, I also have, they're basically dental bibs. Um, and I'll use these, of course, you can see these are also in a bag. Um, I'll put these on people's clothing so I don't get any ink on people's clothing. Um, so yeah, you know, it's definitely super, super important to keep your work area clean, and I hope that might have helped a little bit, and uh, you know, by all means, you know, feel free to even text me if you guys have any questions. My uh, number here in Massachusetts is 413-329-0868. As always, think Inc. See ya.